Okay, gang, so uh, we're going to try and cover the topic of body temperature homeostasis, also called thermoregulation. So basic idea here, guys, we've, we've talked about homeostasis a bunch of times this year, but the idea is the main, remember the maintenance of a relatively stable internal environment. So in this case, what we're focusing on is keeping our body temperature around our 98.6 degrees. Right? Um, so if you play that out, Okay, that means we just have two scenarios. Um, well, we, what we have is we either get too hot or too cold. Right? Now, to start with, if we're going to maintain a temperature, we have to know what the temperature is. And to do that, we have our what are called the central thermoreceptors. Okay? They're found inside the hypothalamus. The thalamus, hypothalamus is this little kind of very middle chunk of your brain. Okay? Um, and that works just like your body's thermostat. Okay? So in your house... You have your temperature set at, you know, 68 degrees, all right? And you have two then scenarios. Either your, your body temperature goes above that and your, your house tries to fix it by turning on the air conditioning, or your body temperature um, drops below that and you turn on the heat and you try and fix the, the, the problem. In your body, pretty much the exact same scenario, guys. We have two scenarios. We can either get too hot, okay? or we can get too cold, and what we want to do is then talk about how we deal with those. But the key is knowing. So to know what our body temperature is, we have to have those central thermoreceptors, okay? So they can detect the temperature and tell us what we want to do. So scenario number one, if we get too hot, um, this is just like question number one from your case study, all right? So scenario number one, okay, we get too hot, we have two solutions, okay? Uh, one of the solutions is sweating. All right? So sweat is the one that you guys all know about. You get too hot and your body's going to start to sweat uh, to uh, take care of that problem. All right? Now, sweating is um, by itself not useful for your body. Okay? By itself, it does not cool you down because the sweat is going to be the same temperature, temperature as you. It's close to 100 degrees. Okay? So the sweat sitting on your body doesn't help you. It's when the sweat evaporates, okay? So sweat has to evaporate, okay? So if you forget that part, it's useless, okay? So it's got to evaporate. Um, and when that sweat evaporates, it takes away heat from the body. It takes energy to evaporate water, so that takes away heat from your body, and that is the important part there. So the sweat evaporating uh, cools you down. Uh, the good way to remember that, guys, is if you think about um, when you're hot on a humid day, things don't evaporate very much, so you don't cool down. Without the evaporation, you don't cool down very much. If it's people talk about dry heat, in dry heat, you evaporate very quickly. There's not much moisture in the air, so the sweat evaporates very quickly, so that sweating cools you down very quickly. All right? So the second idea um, we have to talk about is vasodilation. So vasodilation over here. All right. Now, what vasodilation is, we've talked about it in class already, but vasodilation is the opening of blood vessels, okay? And it's depicted over here on the right. So normally, these blood vessels are fairly small. So see over here, the, the blood vessels are normally fairly small, but when we're hot, we open them up. See how much wider these are over here? And that means more heat goes to the skin. And the key is more heat to the skin Okay, more blood going to the skin takes more heat with it, and as that heat gets closer to the surface of the body, it can leave, 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 it can leave out of your body. All right? And a lot of that heat will go into evaporating the sweat that you already have on the outside of the body. So I think the most easily, easy way to look at this, guys, is with more blood flowing into the skin, that means more heat goes into the skin and therefore more heat can leave your body. Right? So when you're too hot, two, two solutions, you sweat and the sweat has to evaporate. Okay, so we sweat and we sweat, the sweat evaporates and we have vasodilation, which means the blood vessels open, more blood flows in the skin, more heat goes to the skin and more heat leaves the body. And when a person's hot and you put your hand on them, you can actually feel that heat. It's like they're, they're, they feel like an oven. They're just giving off heat. All right, so let's look at the opposite scenario. Okay? So the opposite scenario is if we get too cold. Okay, so if we get too cold, we want to find a way to conserve the heat we have and make more heat. Okay, so the first thing we do, guys, is we conserve the heat through through vasoconstriction. So vasoconstriction, as you can kind of see over here, right, 
And this one right here, the blood vessels are much smaller. If you close the blood vessels down, it's the exact opposite problem. You don't get the, as much heat loss through the skin. Vasodilation, when we're hot, we open it up and let out lots of heat, let out lots of heat. Okay, But over here, we close it down, not very much blood flowing into the skin, so therefore not very much heat is lost through the body. All right. So the second thing we got to do is we got to make more heat, and we make more heat through um, our shivering. Okay, so shivering, 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 very important, guys. Um, now, shivering by itself does not warm us up. Every time I teach this, I get students that talk, uh, talk to me about like the friction of the muscles sliding back and forth and how that warms us up, and it really doesn't have anything to do with that, guys. What it has to do with is the fact that shivering uses ATP. Okay? For a muscle to contract, it has to use a lot of ATP. And if you want the muscles to keep contracting, right, you have to make more ATP. And the way we make more ATP, you remember, is cell respiration. So cell respiration. Okay? Now, cell respiration, um, that's how we normally make ATP. right? We take oxygen and glucose and we burn it together and it makes us uh, ATP and carbon dioxide and energy. Now, the thing that's interesting about all that is the energy that we make, okay, that energy that's made from cell respiration, only a little bit goes to ATP. Um, somewhere around 85% becomes heat, okay? So when anytime you trigger the body into cell respiration, it makes a lot of heat. Your body makes a ton of heat when you digest food because your muscles are contracting and grinding it up. Your heart is generating a lot of heat for you all day long because it's got to it's got to use ATP for that. Your brain generates a lot of heat for you all day long because it's using ATP, which means it has lots of cell respiration going on. So the whole purpose of shivering, okay, the whole purpose of shivering is to use Right? We have to use this ATP, which then makes the body go into more cell respiration. And that gives us the, the nice side benefit of the fact that a lot, most of that energy becomes heat. All right? And that will heat us back up. All right? All right, so two slides left that I want to show you in this kind of summarize things. So this is what's uh, this is like a thermal image of a body. I'm um, looking at it's just a schematic, guys. It's not a, not a true picture. Um, on this side, okay, we're looking at a person that is probably above normal body temperature. They've opened up all the blood vessels. All the blood is flowing to the surface of the body, and they are giving off heat like crazy. Heat is just flowing right out of this body, all over the place, leaving the body, leaving the body, leaving the body. Okay, the person on the right. This guy over here is probably cold. And you can tell because the hands and the feet and the body, all of the middle here, this very middle, the center, is very warm. But the rest of the body is cooled down, and that's because of the vasoconstriction. So if you constrict the blood vessels, less heat goes to the skin. And that's what you'll notice. If you, if you, uh, if you shake somebody's hand and they're, and they're really cold, their hand feels cold. Well, it is. If you look right here, this hand would be colder then this hand. It's going to be a lower body temperature, okay? Um, because the body is, is conserving the heat, keeping trying to keep it all inside here, bundle it up nice and tight inside, and it lets the extremities drop down, okay? Your most important stuff is right here, your brain, your heart, your lungs. So you keep that at a good temperature, and you don't worry about your hands and your toes so much, all right? I'm going to show you the last one here, guys. Here's just a schematic trying to show you the whole thing. Put it all together, all right? So... The top part is when we're hot, okay, so we get an imbalance, an imbalance, the signal goes to the hypothalamus, the central thermoreceptors inside here at the hypothalamus, right in the middle, okay, that will send out two signals, it's going to cause vasodilation right here, okay, so the vasodilation, the blood vessels are going to open up and let out heat out of the body, and then it's going to cause sweating, okay, um, and then the sweat has to uh, evaporate, guys. So between those two things, it should now bring our temperature back to where we're supposed to be. All right? Now, down the bottom, we have the exact opposite problem. We uh, all of a sudden, we detect the central thermoreceptors get a signal right here in the middle, hypothalamus. Ooh, we're too cold, so we want to do two things. 
vasoconstrict that holds in the heat, right? Holds it inside. And then we send the signal to the muscles to start shivering. And the shivering, remember, only warms us up because it uses ATP. All this muscle contraction here uses ATP, which makes us go into more cell respiration. And that cell respiration is what actually warms us up. It produces heat and brings us back to normal. All right. So the whole idea, the big idea that I want to make sure you guys are getting out of this is the fact that it's all about maintaining normal temperatures um, and it's not terribly tricky, not terribly complicated, guys. All right. Hope that helps. Good luck.